What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back for some more live Pokemon Showdown. Today we're going to be uh, starting a UU session and it's going to be three parts long. I am uh, expecting each part to be about 25 to 30 minutes in that range. Um, it works out to be about the same amount of time total as the five part sessions that are like 15 minutes long. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about the same amount of time, just less videos. Uh, so that is that so I'm bringing an offensive team because I wanted to use offense again because it's you know something different I almost always play balance So uh, it's a little, something a little bit off the wall for me I guess I'm not that great at playing offense, but uh, I'm gonna give it a go and uh, The only recovery I have on this team is healing wish which I'll get into later But we're gonna start off here with Beth the Nidoqueen. Queen. It's an offensive stealth rocker So obviously I have the stealth rock sludge wave and earth power are our stabs which hit very hard Thanks to sure force and the life orb um, and then Ice Beam is for things like Gligar. Now, I have uh, 216 speed EVs with a modest nature, and that allows me to outspeed everything up to Defensive Arcanine. Um, so they often do not expect me to be running that much speed, and will stay in and get destroyed by an Earth Power. So uh, that's a lot of fun. It also allows me to outspeed Gligar. Uh, which is actually pretty fast despite usually being defensive. Uh, so then we have Frostlass, which is going to be our Spike Stacker, the dedicated lead. I don't know why it had um, HP investment there. I think I just clicked the suggested spread, but I shouldn't have done that. So uh, we want max special attack, max speed, timid nature. Um, so spikes, destiny bond, shadow ball, and taunt. Taunt prevents um, just about everything except for a Zelf from setting up uh, their own hazards and uh, I can set up spikes and then I can potentially take something down um, as I go down with a Destiny Bond and Shadow Ball hits things like Espeon that might want to try to bounce those hazards back. Then we have Rotundo, the Snorlax Assault Vest with the Thick Fat. Um, this is basically my dedicated switch in slash counter to things like Hydreigon and Chandelure which are extremely extremely popular. They're both in the top 10 as far as uh, usage in the tier. Um, and I kind of needed an answer to them, so uh, Salt Vest allows me to take Draco's Dark Pulses, Fire Blast, and I'm obviously immune to Shadow Ball. So I have Body Slam, which is nice because of that Paralysis chance. Uh, it opens some doors for um, things like the Infernape and Shaman. Um, and then I have Earthquake. Pursuit is great because a lot of Psychic types like Alakazam and Espeon can do nothing to Snorlax, and we'll try to switch out. Um, and then I have Fire Punch, which is basically just there for Fortress because um, it does tend to want to switch in on Snorlax. But anyway, moving on, then we have Choice Bandit, Infernape, um, Iron Fist, uh, Max Speed, Max Attack, Jolly Nature, Flare Blitz, U-Turn, Close Combat, and Mach Punch, just because the team definitely needed some uh, priority. Uh, pretty standard, uh, nothing special about it, but it does hit like a truck. Uh, Infernape just so good. Uh, and then we have Vibes, the Choice Scar Flygon, which is not nearly as good as Infernape in this tier. Um, and it's kind of strange that I have Defog on a, an offensive team that has Spikes and Stealth Rock, but um, there are cases where Defog is going to be very useful, especially if hazards um, become a problem on my side. Uh, sometimes it's worth it to get rid of hazards on both sides, uh, especially if there are things like Sticky Web and I need to rely on uh, Infernapes like Close Combat to win. So, you got Earthquake and Outrage uh, and U-Turn, pretty standard there. And then last but not least, a Pokemon I've never used before, uh, Shaman. So I decided to go Life Orb since this is an offensive team. Uh, it does have the natural cure so it can absorb Toxics and Willows and then switch out. Uh, Seed Flare is its stab move of choice which hits like a truck with the Life Orb. Uh, Earth Power is for Fire types and Steel types. Um, and uh, Psychic is pretty good coverage as well. So I don't know if I'm going to actually use it or not, but you know, things like, I, I mean, I really just needed it for Crobat. This team can potentially get like 6-0'd by, by Crobat. So uh, if it tries to switch in on a Sea Flare or something, I can smack it with a Psychic and uh, yeah, at least weaken it a bit. And then last but not least, I had the Healing Wish on there as I am just getting into a battle here. But uh, the Healing Wish is useful. So I can play a little bit more recklessly and allow things like Snorlax or Flygon to maybe get burned. Um, or if things like Nidoqueen get weakened, I can uh, switch back in later on. So that is that. Uh, looking at this team here, he's got a Magic Bouncer, he's got a Sticky Web User, he's got a Spinner in the Tentacruel. Um, I'm assuming this is his Rocker just because he has no other options for Stealth Rock on the team. But it also doesn't have Intimidate, so maybe it is offensive. 
uh, dedicated lead is Frostlass, so I'm going to set up Spikes here. And he does go for the Pursuit, actually, so he is offensive. Um, hmm. I'm just going to Destiny Bond, since I do outspeed you. You're not Scarf. I don't know what you are. Are you, like, Dread Play or something? He's actually going to switch into the Tentacruel. Um, do you have Toxic, maybe? Because I'm really tempted to just click test Destiny Bond again. Predicting him to want to Scald me. Um, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna destiny. You can't rapid spin. Oh, you do have the toxic. Okay, I should have taunted. I should have taunted. My gut was saying he has toxic, but usually uh, toxic spikes is more useful on Tentacruel than toxic. But all right, fair enough. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to uh, set up a spike here. He's just clearly wanting to uh, wear me down with the toxic, so I might as well get up as many hazards as possible. Uh, or I, I could actually shadow ball him to weaken him to a point where I can definitely KO him later on um, and prevent the spin and potentially get rocks up for the Galvantula and the Rotom too. I'm actually very surprised he didn't lead off with the Galvantula, so I'm starting to wonder if that's even a sticky web thing. Hmm. Or maybe he, you know, saw the Frostlass, thought that that was going to be my likely lead, and uh, did not want to get taunted because all Galvantula can do is Thunder and I can break his Sash, so I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense indeed. So, we'll see what he wants to do here. He's taking some time to think about it, unless this is just lag, which is also possible. Uh, yeah, I was, also, I didn't mention at the beginning, but I want to thank you guys um, for all the support lately, all the likes, comments, suggestions, all of those things. And uh, the update video that I put out a while back, um, I'm not sure when this particular video is going up, but um, yeah, you guys have shown so much support, so I really just wanted to thank you for that. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me, and uh, keeps me motivated, keeps me positive, and uh, wanting to just do as um, you know as much as I can to uh, make this channel a better place. So uh, that is that, and uh, Tentacruel is just going to try to rapid spin. Um, okay, I mean I guess he just wants the Toxic to kill me, but you're better off going for. Toxics, I guess. I don't know. But I do get a crit and another special defense. Did I just get two special defense drops in a row? I did. What is that? What? Um, so now his Tentacruel is not going to be able to spin because um, he, he might want to switch out here just because of the Spadef drops, depending on what I go out into. I can force him out with several things. Flygon forces him out, but he does have the Rotom still around, so I don't want to uh, be clicking EQ. I don't really even want to be clicking Outrage at this point. But I can scare him out with uh, Nidoqueen here. So he is going to go into the Rotom, actually, on the predicted Earth Power. So I probably should have a Sludge Wave or Stealth Rocked there. But in the off chance he wanted to sack it, I didn't want to do that. And I also didn't want him going into Espeon on a predicted uh, Stealth Rock. So I am going to switch in the Snorlax, predicting an Overheat. But he actually goes for the Will-O-Wisp, so he is... Uh, giving away that he is defensive. I can still go for Body Slam just for some damage here. Because being burned is not the end of the world. Uh, just because I do have Healing Wish. So if I can get a power on something, that'd be great. Especially because he switches in Haxorus here. So, uh, fortunately, we don't get the power, which is unfortunate. Um, possibly not the end of the world, though. Just because he is Dragon Dance and probably has a Lumberry. So, yeah, we still don't get the power even after another Body Slam. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a Mach Punch from Infernape will take him out from there. So that damage is all we needed. So we can just let Snorlax go down at this point. Uh, even though it was a pretty good counter to the Espeon, depending on what that set was. Looking at the rest of his team, Snorlax wasn't going to be that useful anyway. Um, especially because that, uh, that Rotom is defensive. I, I didn't need like a dedicated switch into it. It's not like it's specs or something. So I can go into Flygon because I do naturally outspeed. I am jolly not adamant, so it doesn't matter what his nature is. And uh, unfortunately, I think I do need to Outrage here. If I lock myself into EQ, he gets a safe switch into the Rotom, which I don't like. He can still go into Rotom, but he's going to take some damage before burning me. Um, and I, I do still have that uh, Healing Wish in the back. So... Um, uh, yeah, and on top of that, Flygon is not necessary to win at this point. So, uh, it's looking like Nidoqueen is going to be my one of my tickets, because it beats everything except for uh, the Espeon. And I do have... what do I have for that? I have Shaman. 
Espeon can't, uh, cannot, cannot, cannot Oko a Shaman. But I am going to save this because it also, this also beats Espeon. So he's most likely going to, let's see, he's not going to Volt Switch. I don't know what he's going to do. Overheat maybe, I can take that. Yeah, he's defensive. That only does 55% and he's going to lower his special attack. Um, do I want to click Stealth Rock? Part of me really wants to. I don't think he's going to switch in his Espeon here. He hasn't switched in it yet, which I'm kind of curious, but I'm just going to click Sludge Wave in case he does want to switch it in. He opts to go for another Overheat, which will not kill me, and he takes all that damage on Rotom. Is he going to switch out now? Another Overheat, that's not going to kill, because it only did 26%, and he does go into the Tentacruel, not the Espeon, so I do get the rocks up. He's not going to be able to spin here. He is Black Sludge, so I don't think he's running any speed, which means I do outspeed him because I'm speedy, Nidoqueen. And so his spinner is gone, all those hazards are up. Um, I'm really curious as to why he didn't ever try going into Espeon at all. Like, I, mean, I guess he didn't want to take damage on it. Maybe it's offensive. Maybe it's like Calm Mind or something. But he's going to go into Crocodile here, which uh, does outspeed me. But at this point, I don't need Nidoqueen anymore. Got those rocks up so that the Rotom is dead coming back in. So I don't have to worry about anything getting burned. I can go right into Shaman and just uh, Healing Wish the Flygon if I wanted to. Um, especially because I know this thing is not Scarfed and it doesn't get any priority. So that's going to force him out. Um, hmm. I mean, I could go into uh, Chimpino there too, the Infernape. Because nothing really wants to take a couple of banded close combats, especially with all those hazards up. But I'm going to go into Shaman here, and I'll just click Seed Flare, as he does actually leave it in and just lets me kill it. So that's fine by me. He's probably going to go into... Yeah, he's going to go into the Galvantula. I should have... I probably should have Healing Wish first, because this thing outspeeds me. Um, the question is, are you going to go for the Sticky Web here? Hmm. I mean, I think my best play at this point is actually not the Healing Wish. It's probably to go into my Infernape just because um, I can Healing Wish on the Espeon. So, I mean, I could try to Sack Flag on here, but that uh, Scarf could be useful for the Espeon, depending on if it is max speed, which most of them are. So, yeah, he the only other play he could go for besides Sticky Web there was the Bug Buzz, and Infernape is fine switching that in, and now something dies. He's just got to pick his fodder at this point. I believe we Speed Tie. Yeah, we both hit 346. So, uh, he's got to sack something. Um, I would sack the Rotom at this point, but... Actually, no, he switches in Espeon! That was not the play to make, my friend. That seals the game. Now it's over. Espeon was the only thing that could uh, possibly give me some trouble, uh, and he's just going to forfeit. I don't know what he was thinking. There was no reason for me to click close combat at that point. The recoil really didn't bother me. There's no way that he would know that I had Healing Wish, so he wasn't thinking about that at all, but you don't switch Espeon in on a, an Infernape. Like, that's just... that was I, I don't think that was a very good play, but um, who knows what he was thinking. Maybe there was something that I'm just not uh, thinking about at the moment. So that was a win. We will go ahead and find another battle. Again with the Galvantula, and I'm going to lead with uh, Frostlass. I will taunt this because I do not want Sticky Web up. I do have Defog in case he does get it up. I can get rid of that so that uh, Infernape can have a field day. But uh, this is actually a very slow offensive team. Now that I'm looking at it, I have a Snorlax and a Nidoqueen. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a weird offensive team. But he did try to go for the Sticky Web. Now I can Shadow Ball him to break his Sash as he does show off the Thunder. Please don't paralyze me. Just kidding. He paralyzed me. Um, I could save this for a uh, potential spin block on the Blastoise, but I'm just going to sack it at this point. His taunt's going to wear off, so I do need to go into something that can kill him here, which means I kind of have to go into Flygon because there's just going to be a speed tie with um, with Infernape. He doesn't know that because he could think that I'm Scarfed, but I really don't want him getting up Sticky Web. I don't want to have to defog later on, so uh, he actually has no switch-ins to an EQ, so he has to sack something, and he is going to opt to sack the Galvantula. So that's great, because no Sticky Web. I didn't get any spikes up either. Um, I would have been able to if it were not for the... whatchamacallit. 
the para, but that is uh, something else. He also could have switched in Espeon, predicting a spike, but he did not do that. So uh, I'm going to go into Snorlax regardless of what this thing wants to go for. He ends up going for Ice Beam um, just because I had a Flygon out there. But Tri Attack really doesn't do that much either. So uh, this Porygon Z is not going to be a problem as long as I have Snorlax around because, as you can see, that did 6.5%. Granted, I have a Salt Fest and Thick Fat, but still. But still. Uh, I'm tempted to click Pursuit here, predicting him to switch just to get some damage off on this thing, but I'm actually going to uh, pull a double into Nidoqueen, and he actually goes into Blastoise. Why is that you're switching to Snorlax? I could have just Body Slam parried you, or just got a lot of damage off with Return. Um, hmm. Is he just going for super effective things? Is that, is that what we're doing? Aura Sphere? So now he's going to go for the Water Pulse because I had a uh, Nidoqueen out there, and unfortunately he's going to confuse me. Uh, Seed Flare I think is an Oko, but I can't risk him just um, killing me with an Ice Beam here because I hit myself, so I am going to have to switch. That really stinks. <laughs> that really stinks. He's actually going to switch here into Machamp. Did he predict me to go into Snorlax? What is happening? Is he making arbitrary switches or are these predictions and I'm just not seeing it? I don't know what's happening. Um, I don't have a switch into this. I have to sack something because uh, judging by the way this guy is playing, this is definitely going to be no guard, dynamic punch, Machamp. Um, what do I want to sack? Maybe Snorlax? But I, the problem I have with that is then Porygon Z is an issue, especially if it's Scarfed. I don't know if I have a choice, though. Hmm. Maybe Flygon. Yeah, I'm going to switch in Flygon. I don't need it. Uh, he is just going to Dynamic Punch. That's an Oko. I wonder if that's Banded. I don't know. Flygon is not the uh, bulkiest thing in the world. And that's still a base. What is it? Is it base 120? I think it is. Coming off from a champ. Yeah, that's... I mean, even if he is AV, that could still uh, potentially do a lot. And now I have to sack something else to get damage off on this thing. So I'm going to close combat here. Um, and he's just going to kill me with another dynamic punch. Which is unfortunate, because now I'm really far behind. That switch that he made into Machamp um, really hurt me. Really did. And the reason I didn't want to go into uh, Shaman there was because it Okos that Blastoise, which now can cause me a problem, especially if it has Aura Sphere uh, for Snorlax. So uh, a lot of them are Assault Vest. I didn't want to risk that because Psychic was not going to kill. So uh, that is that. Um, and I do outspeed the Arcanine as well, even if it is offensive, because I am timid max speed. Uh, 100 base speed, Arcanine is base 95, so he would have to extreme speed me to get damage off. Um, and almost all Shaman carry the Earth Power, so I would imagine he would know that. Uh, at this point, he could go into the Espeon because it outspeeds. The Porygon Z might be Scarfed, so that could be an option here. Uh, if he goes into Blastoise, I just Oko it. So, he, yeah, he's got a couple of options, but uh, he is going to go into the Espeon. Ooh, it's shiny. The shiny puke green Espeon. Good stuff. I mean, I have a switch into this as well with the Snorlax. So I'm going to go right into that as he goes for Psychic that does 20%. Thankfully, he does not get his Spadef drop. And now I click Pursuit because he's going to switch out. Um, unless he has HP Fighting, and even still, that's not going to do that much. So, yeah, he's just dead. That's just an Oko. That's crazy. That is crazy because that is a non-stab move. I mean, so I guess I could have Oko'd him if I had Crunch, too. But uh, Espeon out of the way, that's perfect because it did outspeed Shaman and uh, outsped Beth as well, uh, the Nidoqueen, and that would have been an Oko. I'm going to switch in the uh, Nidoqueen here. If he's offensive, he's going to go for close combat. Um, he could go for the Will-O-Wisp if he's defensive. So we'll have to see. We will have to see. Actually, the defensive variants sometimes carry the close combat just for uh, things like Hydreigon too. I've seen that. I don't know how good that is, but he does go for the close combat. He doesn't show Life Orb, though. So, and I don't think that's banded damage. I mean, I'm speedy Nidoqueen, so it makes sense for it to do that much. Um, I want to stay in and click Earth Power. Not that I have a choice. Um, and he is going to go into Blastoise, which does take 46%, which means it looks like if I go for Sludge Wave, which is just barely more powerful, it's going to be a roll. It's going to be a damage roll, and I don't know if I want to risk that. 
Um, he's most likely going to go for Water Pulse, so I could switch in either Snorlax or the Shaman. Although, I kind of want Snorlax to be healthy for that Porygon Z. So, uh, I feel like this guy's been making arbitrary plays, though. But I am just going to go into the Shaman. And he does go for Aura Sphere. That was not an arbitrary play. That was a blatant prediction of the Snorlax, and I can respect that. That was a good play. Um, but, yeah, not going to be enough to take out the Shaman. So, I could opt for a Healing Wish here, but I do have two hits left. I'm going to Earth Power. I really thought he was going to switch in Arcanine there. Uh, but the extra damage is all I needed. I know I outspeed with Nidoqueen. So, um, I mean, I could have Seed Flared there. But then he was just going to go into Porygon Z. Um, or Arcanine, depending on uh, what his speed is. But, uh, yeah, I just needed the extra damage. So now this is not a damage roll. Shaman didn't really do anything else for me anyway. Other than the Healing Wish, which it doesn't look like I'm going to get a chance to use. So I will just go for the Earth Power that's going to take out the Blastoise. He's most likely going to go into the Porygon, which he does. And I'm going to make the switch into Snorlax, which should be obvious. And because of that, he will go for the Tri-Attack in all likelihood. We shall see. But that uh, that is his play. Hopefully he doesn't get a status. Don't you dare freeze me. Don't you dare freeze me! Thank you very much. We can actually um, potentially take two more of those if uh, we don't get high rolled or critted. And uh, we can go for a body slam. I really need Snorlax to... To win here. Um, I'm going to Body Slam. I was really tempted to Earthquake, predicting Arcanine to come in, but he opts to just stay and go for the Tri-Attack. He d Wow. Not only does he not get the status or the roll that he needed to KO me the following turn, but we do get the para. Pretty sure he's Scarf, though, so he will outspeed. Um, Earthquake will kill him from here, so in case he wants to switch for whatever reason, um, I don't think that's a good play, but I will Earthquake just to get as much damage off as possible. Because uh, it's going to kill this Porygon Z anyway. Because that Body Slam did 61%. So he does still outspeed even though he's parried. So the para ended up not mattering. Um, again, he gets even a smaller roll, or lower roll I should say, that time. So I don't know if he's just if that was max damage and he just kept getting close to max damage or what. But he did get kind of low roll there, I think. Um... I don't know, but he's just going to go in with the Arcanine now, and now this entire battle comes down to whether or not he's running speed on Arcanine. If he's max speed, uh, or even just a little bit of speed, he is going to kill us with a Flare Blitz most likely, and if he is not running speed, then my Nidoqueen will outspeed thanks to that uh, bit of H, not HP, that bit of um, speed investment that I have. Not really even a bit, I mean I'm running like 216, so <laughs> it's a little bit more than a bit I would say. So we will see what he uh, what happens here. And it turns out that he's not running speed as we outspeed him and take him out in one hit with an Earth Power. We will give him a GG. That was ridiculous. Um, oh, we're actually relatively low on the ladder. I thought we were a little bit higher up than that. I thought it was in the 1300s. Like higher 1300s. Maybe I'm thinking of a different tier. Um, I don't know. There also could be some decay going on because I haven't played UU in like three or four weeks. Something along those lines. The last time I played UU, I'm pretty sure was... Yeah, it had to be three or four weeks ago. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this time. So, uh, ended up not being like 25 minutes, but close enough. We'll have two more parts to enjoy this team. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or a comment or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. And until then, game on.